All right, so looking back at um, chart.js, we can see so many cool things that it's able to do for us without us having to do a lot of work. Um, and one of the really great things it does is it um, provides interactivity. We can hover over the data in our chart and get some information about it, something we wouldn't easily be able to do with a print or otherwise static chart. Um, but we're also stuck with the defaults here. Um, we may not like exactly how this is formatted. You know, it's a pretty good starting point. Um, and we might also want to be able to change a little more carefully how this um, appears. And so this is called a tooltip, where we hover over and we get some contextual information. So let's look at how we can customize these. And we'll see there's some simple things we can do, and then some more complex stuff that requires some additional code. Um, a good place to start, of course, is the documentation. So you can um, go to chart.js um, documentation and check it out. And there's lots of info about tooltips we're only going to touch on a little bit, but you might check out some of these additional um, parameters if you're interested in that. Okay. So here's my basic bar chart. I'm gonna go down to options, which is where we're gonna do all of our work here. And um, what I need to do then is create a section called tooltips like this. Don't forget to put a comma because we're separating these sections here. Um, and if you just watched the last video on common data formats, this stuff might start to look familiar. This is actually uh, essentially JSON formatting. So all of the settings that we're creating for our chart are in this data format. Um, which is kind of fun. Okay, so the first thing I do not love about the default here is that this, you see the little box shows up with the orange square on it um, that's like the same color as our data. I don't know why that's there. I mean, I do, but I don't think it's that helpful. So let's get rid of that and we can just say display colors is false. Already, I think that's so much better. If you just stop right there, you know, like I think that's a major improvement. But there's more, obviously, that we can do. Um, next is we can change some color stuff. And I'm just going to grab these here um, so you can see them instead of me typing them all out. So this is still in tooltips. Um, we can change the background color, the title font, which right now is the year that's in bold, and the body font, which is the actual label there. Um, and again, already this just like ties it a little closer to my color scheme. Maybe this is too kind of like too much color and you want it more neutral. Um, but you know, at least this way now we can start playing with this stuff. Um, and there's lots of other parameters if you look in the documentation for those kinds of things. So alignment, font color, font style, we'll check that out in a bit, stuff like that. Okay. Um, now we, oh, and we could also do other stuff. We can add a border. Uh, like this. Oh, I have to change the color. Border color. You know, something like this. Um, it's a little hard to see. Maybe we can make that bigger. I think it should be. There we go. It's just, it's kind of actually really subtle here. Um, so that might be something you want. I don't love it. I think it's a little too visually distracting. Okay. So let's say we want to change the text that actually appears when we hover. This requires a little extra work, um, and it requires this thing um, called a callback, which we don't have to get into the details, but it's essentially JavaScript code that gets run when you hover over a region in your chart. And so we can kind of define a template that decides what's going to happen. Um, and let's start with the title. So again, the title here is 2030. That's the year. And I don't think we need that, at least not in this chart. It's pretty obvious when we're hovering over, it's changing the bar color. I don't think that we need that. Um, so we can say title and then function item everything. Now this format is set by chart.js for us. Um, so you don't even need to worry about it. Just grab the code that's here as a template and change it. You know, we don't need to get into the details here. But if we want nothing to display, we just return nothing. So return just gives back a value when it's finished. And so now when I run this, you can see it just gives me the population. Again, already a simple change, but I think a big payoff in terms of readability. Um, let's say then we want to change the actual data that's displayed here as well. Um, and to do that, we're going to add another callback. That's called the label. Again, item and everything. 
and let's see what it's giving us for these values of item and everything. So I'm going to say console.log item. This is going to print it to the console and console.log everything. When in doubt, printing to the console is going to be really helpful. Let's just bring this up so we can see it. And now when I hover over a point, we can see this printed out. And we can expand this. Um, so the first thing we printed here is the item. And this is going to give us info about this particular bar or whatever portion that we've hovered over. So we can see its X label is the year that's in the X axis. The Y label is our uh, population in this case. We've got the label and the value that gives us the actual um, like the uh, representation of that in the same kind of way. An index and a data set index. We're actually going to use data set index in a little bit. And this is kind of fun. It gives us an X and a Y position on the screen. And if you wanted to do additional fun graphical stuff, you could use those. And then everything returns us. Let's see. I don't know if y'all can see that. There we go. Um, returns us all of the labels and our entire data set as lists. And we're not going to need that right now, but we will use that in a little bit. So let's just move this down. Cool. So now we kind of have a sense of the format for this stuff. Let's use it to make something. So I'm going to grab um, the year, which is our x-axis. So this will be item dot x label. And I'm going to grab the population, which is item dot y label. Um, and that's just, those are things I discovered by looking in the console.log. Um, and those are the values that I want to kind of use to display here. So the next thing um, is that we can build kind of the text that's going to appear. So I'm going to say label equals, um, let's have it say the word population, colon, the population value that we just grabbed up here. And then let's, uh, we, it's in millions. So let's add that because I think that'll be helpful. So we'll say million. And then instead of before we returned nothing, now we want to send back this label that we've created and it'll be displayed on the screen. So if I run this now, we should see population 6127 million. Um, and already, again, I think this is so much more readable than before and it allows us more careful control. Um, so one other thing I think we might want to try here, um, we're used to seeing numbers with what are called thousands separators. So in, in the U S here, um, we would read this as six comma one, two, seven million, rather than it written out as a whole number. It makes it a little easier to read. Um, this is called digit grouping, which falls under this idea of decimal separators. This is a whole long topic. But the point that I want to bring up here is that actually, depending on what country you're in, the uh, sort of uh, formatting for that changes. In some countries, it'll be a period. Others, it'll be a space. Um, there are some kind of standards for this, but it's going to vary depending on where you're located. So how do we deal with that in our chart? Well, again, this is what's really cool about working online is that um, we can ask our browser where is this person located? Or what are their preferences set in their browser in terms of language? And that will then allow us to automatically add those separators depending on what language they speak. So we can say population equals population dot to locale string. And this is a JavaScript thing. Again, don't worry about it. You know, the details or whatever, all you need to worry about is this converts our number into a value in, in our case with a comma in it. So now when I run this, you'll see I get six comma one two seven million eight five four nine, et cetera. And this is just gonna make it so much more readable. On um, smaller numbers, obviously there's no commas because we haven't reached that scale. Um, you know, maybe you would want to convert from million to trillion here when it crosses over that threshold, or sorry, billion. Um, you know, you could certainly do that if you wanted to in code. The nice thing here is you don't need to know a lot of code just to make this more readable. Um, cool. So we remove the color a uh, little block. We remove that uh, label for the year and we just kind of updated what we see here. Let's add one more thing. Um, there's an additional section that's not displayed by default called footer. And we work this the same way. Oops, everything. And let's say for our footer, we want to compare this value to the previous year. Now we're going to get a little deeper into some code stuff here. So if you want, you can just go ahead and skip ahead. But let me show you how we would accomplish this. 
Um, so for this, we're going to um, want to know the index. Um, and that's something that we got when we printed to the console. Um, so I'm going to say index. This is where are we in the data set. So we need item and item actually might return us a list. So we're grabbing the first item from that dot index. So that's our current position. And then we can't compare the first year to a previous year because there's no data for that. So I'm gonna say if index is greater than zero, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, um, let's just return nothing. So it's gonna be blank if there's, um, if for this first one here. So if our index is greater than zero, then we wanna get our current value and the previous uh, value for the data. And I'm just gonna make some more variables here for this. So let current equals everything. Now everything gives us the full list of the data and the full list of our labels. And this is where we need to be able to access this stuff. So everything, um, oh, just looking over my notes here, dot data sets zero, this will be our first data set. We only have one for this, dot data at the index. So this is a little crazy where we get a list of everything that includes our data sets. We're gonna grab the first one, since there's only one, we're gonna grab the data from that at position defined by our current position in the data set. And then we can do the same thing for previous. So this will be the one before, and instead of index, we'll do index minus one. So again, the reason that we wanna check if index is greater than zero, zero minus one is negative one, and clearly there's no data at position negative one. And then we can calculate the difference. So let diff equals current minus previous. And then we could return, uh, we'll call this change, and then the difference. So let's try running this. So now when I hover over, you can see that's a change of 4477 here. And then we go here, we don't see that text because that's index, at index zero, that's the first element. One more thing I think I'd like to change. We don't see here the population going down, um, but we would see a negative number if that was the case. In fact, maybe we can just try changing our data here. This will be artificial, but we can try this. So here we have a positive change up by 1,603, and here we have a negative change by 9,252 million. Um, I want it to be when the change is positive to include a little plus sign here. And there's a few ways that we could do that, uh, but I think the easiest is to just say, if diff is greater than zero, so if it's a number larger than zero, just add a plus sign in front of it like that. And now when we return this, we're gonna get a positive change, positive change. Sorry, there's a cat walking right here who wants to be on my keyboard. Buddy, you can't do that right now. Um, and then when we have a negative number, we have a negative change. I think that just makes it a little clearer that this change is, um, is in the positive range, positive number. One more thing then, you'll also notice that the formatting here um, is in bold for that footer, which highlights that and makes it, you know, it takes us away from, sorry, let's get rid of this big guy here. Come on, fella. Um, let's change the styling of that. And that's something we can do up here with our colors uh, right here. So we can add a footer color and a font style. And now it's normally bold. In this case, we're just setting it to normal. And now I think this is better. If we wanted, we could also do body style bold like this. And so that already this like design hierarchy ideas become much clearer where population is what we really wanna do. And then the change, you might think about what you wanna do here, you know, additional things that you could add. There's certainly some really cool stuff that you could do just with the basics here. Um, one other thing you might look at, there are some pretty cool um, plugins for Chart.js, including this one, um, which does data labels and it does a whole bunch of different things. Um, these are all interactive, we can see bar chart here. So it allows us to do all these different kinds of labels. Um, it is a little more complicated to use, but I wanted to share that with you. I'll put a link to that as well in case you're interested in that. Um, and that's it. So really we just add this additional tooltips section to our options here. And if all you wanna do is change some colors and stuff, it's real easy. If you wanna get in a little deeper, this callback section, just copy paste this into your code and then you can modify it to fit your data and it'll let you um, 
yeah, do some really cool kinds of stuff here.